Hi, this is Greg from N5D, and today we're going to talk about who really runs this world. In ancient times, we were led to believe that the pharaohs had the greatest power, but they were merely covering up the fact that extraterrestrials were on the land long beforehand. As part of their cover-up, they changed the head of the Sphinx from a lion to the face of Pharaoh Khafre. Because this face is so disproportional, it's quite obvious that the original creation was not that of a man-lion hybrid. As civilizations grew while empires rose and fell, the next pyramid of control was represented by the monarchy, with the king at the top of the pyramid. As globalization increased, the new system of power became the Vatican, as crusades and inquisitions murdered millions of people throughout the years in their quest for ultimate global power. If you think you own anything, you're wrong. Even if you paid cash for your house, the Pope still owns it, according to the Papal Bull Decrees of 1455 and 1493. According to researcher Santos Bonacci, in the year 1302, Pope Boniface VII created the first express trust in history. When the Crusaders left their homes and riches behind, the church developed a plan to help their trusted friends. In essence, I will hand over my estate to you while I go to Jerusalem to fight for Christ. The person that's given the rights to these estates became the trustee, the owner of the property. In some cases, when the knights came back from fighting, they found out that the trustee decided to keep their possessions. The courts would not support the knights because the trustee had the right to keep their property. Because of the Roman Catholic Church's desire to control through their inquisitions, they decided that they would create the first express trust called Unum Sanctum, which was written on a papal bull and placed in their vault. On the papal bull, it says that all of the souls in the world belong to the Roman Catholic Church. And they do because no one has challenged their claim. Your birth certificate is the title of the soul that they own in their registries. They have registered you, and that title is the title to your soul. The Holy See owns everything, so while you're lost at sea, the Vatican claims ownership of everything, just like they did to the knights who fought their wars. Because secret societies are so compartmentalized, even they have their own pyramid of control. For example, the Freemasons have a Christian Bible in all of their lodges, but at the top of Freemasonry, you'll find the Luciferian doctrine that honors and worships the fallen angel Lucifer. The highest level of Freemasonry is the 33rd degree, where they have a motto of Ordo Ab Chao, which means order out of chaos. Many people believe the Vatican is at the top of the pyramid. What many people do not realize is that the Pope is being controlled in secrecy by a person known as the Black Pope, this system of control is similar to any democratic election process, where politicians are selected, not elected. The current acting pope is merely a puppet and spokesman for the black pope. So, if the pope is so powerful and has enough net worth to feed, clothe, and shelter every person on the planet, then why is there starvation and homelessness? Why does the Vatican own so much gold, and who truly is pulling the strings of the black pope? According to the Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki came to this planet in search of gold to use as microdust in order to save their depleted atmosphere, similar to what we're seeing here on our own planet. At first, they used their own lineage to mine the gold on this planet, but eventually, they decided it would be easier to genetically manipulate the existing species of man on Earth to mine gold for them. This explains why gold is considered such a valuable asset on our planet. It also explains why the Vatican has so much of it, because they're simply answering to their overlords, the Anunnaki. So, who's above the Pope? Lower level malevolent extraterrestrials such as the Reptilians and Dracos have their hands in all facets of our society. We even see how the overlords protect their buildings with gargoyles and how the Reptilian is prominent in ancient symbolism. So who's above the Reptilians and Dracos? The Anunnaki are the Draco and Reptilian overlords, yet just like those competing for the ultimate power on this planet, these factions are battling themselves as well. In alchemy, there's a saying, as above, so below. Our planet has been in total peace for only 8% of our recorded history. So if as above, so below applies, then there are numerous wars going on in the heavens above. It once again boils down to power and control. Just like on our planet, the malevolent extraterrestrials use fear as their source for control as well. 
It's become obvious that this planet is being terraformed for one of these malevolent factions. With their need for gold and through the use of advanced technology, the Anunnaki are above the Reptilians and Dracos. But who's above them? According to the Gnostic text, the Nag Hammadi, Archons are part of the Demiurge, who basically feed off of our fear through various control systems, such as religion, government, the mainstream media, and money. According to Cameron Day, Jehovah plays a main role in this deception, along with every religion that uses fear as a tool for control. They may come through as ascended masters or archangels as well, but basically they are unseen and feed off of negative energy perpetuated through fear. The Archons are basically imposing their dominance over another person or group of people and are violating our personal energy. So who's above the Archons? Just like the Wizard of Oz, there's a malevolent being or race of beings who feed off of negative energy. This explains why you'll never feel good after watching the nightly news or reading the headlines of any mainstream newspaper. It's a vicious cycle of fear, death, pain, suffering, misery, and sacrifices to the overlords. So how do we escape this system of perpetual fear and economic slavery? First off, don't give them your power. Renounce your own personal sovereignty by saying that you no longer agree to be part of their system of control. According to Cameron Day, the first step is to engage the self-clearing system protocols and revoke all agreements that you have made with any beings that don't have your best interests in mind. Next, revoke all agreements to see reality in polarized terms. Every time you revoke agreements, be sure to reclaim your energy that had gone into them. Then affirm your commitment to transcend the control paradigms of the corrupt demiurge without being sidetracked by the pointless polarity battles. You can also turn off your TV, literally. Whether your TV is turned on or turned off, it can emit negative frequencies that play on your psyche. Virtually everything that's on TV is a distraction that prevents you from finding your true divine purpose for being here. Lastly, we all need to come together. As I mentioned in this article, once the bottom of the pyramid unites, the rest will collapse. This is why those in power right now are trying to push race wars and have kept us economically divided. We have the power in numbers to make this world into a literal paradise without the need for economic subservience. But it all boils down to everyone coming together under a common cause and standing up for the best interests of humanity. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below. Please remember to like and to subscribe to N5D videos. That's it for now. This is Greg from N5D.